All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Shauna Elliott, who is in Oklahoma. How are you doing, Shauna? I'm good. Thanks for having me, John. Absolutely. And, and Shona is the author of this great book, uh, Create Value as a Senior Leader, Effective Strategies to Retain Employees, Increase Engagement and Achieve Your Organization's Goals. And this is a great subject to talk about because let's face it, like senior leaders are going to be the ones who are going to have to pull us out of this crisis and, you know, get everybody back on track and then drive on to success in, in what has been one of the strangest collective ex global experience I think anybody's ever had. Um, so, Sean, so senior leaders, what is, what is it that's on their shoulders and how do they need to approach it? Because let's face it, we all take our cues from senior leaders at the end of the day. Yes, you're absolutely right. And unfortunately, I mean, now more than ever, senior leaders need to be able to show up and lead. And yet they're doing so after 100 plus days of trying to manage crisis for their organization. And unfortunately, a lot of senior leaders are uh, tired and the resiliency and the resilience muscle is fatigued to say the least. And they're going to have to show up, unfortunately, for I think the best and their greatest work, which is lying ahead of them, which is emerging from crisis and pulling their organizations out and forging their way forward in the next normal, because I think we're going to be seeing a few more waves, unfortunately, is what's being predicted in terms of COVID round two, three, or whatever comes next with respect to what's ahead, perhaps even politically. Yeah. And, and I think the thing is, right, I mean, the tough thing on, on senior leaders is that in many ways they really have nothing to draw on when it comes to this. This is completely as new to them as it is to anybody else. So part of it is, I think it is, you know, it's obviously reassuring people, but it's also not pretending that you have all the answers. Correct. Absolutely. And unfortunately in some organizations right now, senior leaders are um, in their offices, not knowing what to do next, thinking mm -hmm. they need to have the answers, thinking they need to be out saying this is you know the solution to whatever problems that are occurring and as a result since they don't have those answers they don't know what to do and some are, are staying hidden and not doing anything which unfortunately I think just adds to the the problem at hand and so now more than ever senior leaders need to be engaged at the front lines letting employees share their stories with them as to their own experiences their own fears their own concerns uh, senior leaders sharing what's so for them. Everyone has their own story now going through COVID plus plus 100 days in. Everyone's been impacted. So feeling comfortable and safe to share your own experience and then sharing, hey, I don't know what's happening next. I don't know where we're going or I don't have the answers. And this is what I do know. And this is what I'm currently facing and looking for support and answers and ideas from the front line, I think is really critical for the steps ahead. Yeah, no, I love that idea of like uh, being able to, you know, talk to talk to the organization, talk to people and say, here is what I do know and here's what I don't know. Because I think there's a certain honesty and authenticity in that that people will appreciate, uh, you know, particularly if, you, as I said, if you say, here are the things I absolutely have no clue. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen on this, but here are the things that we I do know and the things we have control over. So let's focus on them. Absolutely. And I think uh, a lot of senior leaders, you know, strategic plans, of the past, the three to five year strategic plan, all organizations go through, uh, a lot of those are thrown out the window. Yeah. Uh, and so planning is really for the next three to six months versus the three to five year window we're accustomed to. And being able to be okay with that, we're pulled out of our routines from a senior leadership perspective. Our annual cycles are, are completely thrown off. So we're actually leading in environments we have no idea how to lead in. So we are uncomfortable senior leaders in that space as well. And being able to say that and being able to say, hey, I know what we've planned in the past is perhaps not where we're at today and help us co-create what our next normal is and let's do it together. We're stronger as a organization uh, and being able to feel comfortable to relinquish some of that, that hold or control and just live amongst your team members and co-create together. I think that's kind of the, the next normal of success. Yeah. And, and one of the, one of the things as well is this um, being able to obviously be flexible and nimble and pivot quickly if you need to, but also not to be knee jerk and just to react. So, I mean, it's, it's quite the balancing act that, uh, that senior leaders have to, have to adopt, right? 
For sure. And then depending on the environment they're working in. So if they uh, report to a board, you know, how resilient mm -hmm. is your board? What are your board expectations? What is the flexibility of your board? So senior leaders that report to directors are kind of caught because the leadership starts at top and depending on where your board members are sitting and what their views and perspectives are, they're shaping how you show up and how you lead. So it's a unique set of circumstances for those CEOs and those CEOs or founders of their own organizations have a bit more leeway. They report to themselves in that aspect. Uh, and in saying that, there's revenue streams that have dried up and new revenue streams to explore, which creates a whole different dynamic with respect to gearing up and being able to pivot quickly and keeping your culture moving forward uh, as is needed when you're trying to branch into perhaps a new market. Yeah, and I think also as you as you were saying is like recognizing that everybody yeah, that everybody's a little bit concerned and, and different ways and people have di and the thing is right different people have different circumstances right now. I mean, if you particularly think if a lot of people are working at home for the first time, but they're not set up for that or they have, you know, kids who aren't in school and they have to deal with that. There's a lot of I mean, people have a lot more um, things, individual things going on in their life right now than perhaps they would in the normal way where you can be a little bit more organized and I think as senior leaders you have to kind of recognize that and figure out a way of being able to accommodate to a certain degree without everything like falling apart. And then that is the tricky balance and I think senior leaders now more, more than ever are having to be human and having to connect mm -hmm. with the humanness of their employees and a lot of senior leaders have kind of lost their way with respect to that. It's been a long time since the humanness has been a part of the conversation in the real way that it has to be today. So for the last hundred days, you've had to hear of the stories of your employees. And as we go into the new school season starting, depending on where you're living mm -hmm. and the state dynamics, every parent that is employed by you is experiencing their own set of concern, worry, anxiety, regardless of the students are back in school in person or virtually or hybrid. And most senior leaders aren't equipped to even think about those things for their employees, let alone themselves, if they are indeed a parent too. And having to have those conversations, I think is really critical because each employee is going through the strange set of dynamics and emotion along with that which impacts their work uh, and it'll impact their work depending on what the school systems do and what they decide as a family. And we don't usually take time to discuss those things mm -hmm. in a pre COVID world. And now those are the things to discuss because it impacts engagement and impacts their effectiveness and it impacts their workload and how they show up. And those are the type of human conversations that are needed to be had right now. And when you go to get your MBA or depending on where you get your education experience, that's not on the list of the curriculum in terms of leadership attributes to be had. Yeah, no, because in the normal way, it's like, you know, well, your life is your life. You figure that out and you show up. Correct. For work, right. Um, where in this circumstance now, this is going to require uh, a lot of businesses to maybe rethink um, work circumstances and work hours. And, you know, say, for instance, and we're just um, talking there say you do your kids can't go back to school they are at home maybe you're you know you're the two both parents work maybe it's single parent who knows whatever but you may have to accommodate a different working setup different hours or you know different ways of engaging i mean you're going to have to be a lot more creative and these are things that you never had to consider before correct and the role of the vp of hr depending on your size of your organization mm -hmm. or whoever your chief people officer is I, it's so critical for them to move beyond the black and white policies of the past. And mm -hmm. this is the time to be creative and innovative and really engage your employees in the discussion. They're the ones that are living it. So setting another policy absent of their yeah. voice, <laughs> I, I think is a, a, a mistake or a misstep. And so I've been encouraging the senior HR leaders I'm working with and CEOs to really do all that they can to engage the employee in the discussion around policies and hear those stories. These are the ones living it. So if you want a policy that's going to have a hope to succeed, it should be based on their views, realities, and perspectives of their current living circumstances. Yeah, and the reality is that if you do um, engage with people and work with them and find ways that can accommodate both the company and, and the individual, you are more likely to get uh, more buy-in, more loyalty, harder work, I would say, even, you know, somebody's even going to go out of their way to prove that they're even more effective once you accommodate them. So there's a lot of upside for it. 
um, on, on both sides of it if you're willing to get creative. Correct. It, it, I think there's nothing but upsides in that scenario. Uh, with the exception of maybe the senior HR leaders or CEO's view of the effort that needs to be mm -hmm. expended to do just that. And the guidance I've been giving is this is the work of the moment. I think there's nothing mm -hmm. else that's more important to spend time on than engaging with your employees and experiencing their environment and engaging them in the discussion of how we go forward. I, to me, there's no other work that's more important to do but that. Yeah, I mean, and to your point, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, you know, your your 4,500 page HR manual is wonderful and all of that, but you can probably throw it out the window right now. <laughs> I agree, and, absolutely. But in that, and that is yeah. a complete uh, abandonment of the philosophy of the HR leader. Sure. I've been a VP of HR, so I can recall those days around policy, form, and function, and and having to adhere. And that is not today's environment. And so a shift for those HR leaders to abandon what they've known to be true in the past for this unknown, knowing mm -hmm. that there still has to be some boundaries and guidance sure. uh, is really uncomfortable for them. And the ones that can release it and go with the flow and just focus on the humanness for you know the next six to eight months, I think keeping that at the forefront will lead to a successful organization and keep their culture moving forward. Yeah, and I think that's an important point, though, that you make there is that is the idea. I think it becomes easier if you think, okay, this isn't forever. Nothing is forever. Right? I mean, this, this, this pandemic isn't forever, hopefully. Um, but nothing is forever. And we're talking in increments of three, six months. So figure out how to get through the three, six months. And maybe then after that, you can start to look at you know, things becoming a little bit more like they were before or whatever, or maybe not. But just be flexible in thinking that nothing is forever. You're talking about how to get through the next three, six, nine months. Correct. And I think when we get through it, it's looking at what went well and what can we incorporate mm -hmm. that did go well yeah. into our, our new normal, or our next normal. And knowing that there's been amazing things learned from this, there's been some downsides as well, but pull from the uh, upsides and incorporate that into whatever mm -hmm. is next. And it's amazing if you're able to do that, what can come from, uh, from that as mm -hmm. opposed to just reverting back to what, was in the past. I think we've long passed that stage where yeah. whatever was, yes, whatever's in the past is no longer going to serve into whatever future is next. Yeah, there's going to be some things that endure and some things that need to change. And it's just a question of identifying which are the things that, you know, that can endure from, from the world before and which are the things that got to change. I like the way you're using the phrase next normal because you know what drives me crazy, that, that yeah. phrase. <laughs> Uh, and, and I mean, it's new for a day and then, yeah, you know, exactly. your kids are not back, you're not back in school. So it's the next yeah. normal. And yeah, then if they yeah. are in school, there'll be an outbreak and then they're back at home and then that's the next normal. And I mm -hmm. think for the next six months, there'll be nothing but next normals. And hopefully that will all stabilize and it'll be the normal for a while. Yeah. And, and it's good. And I mean, in many ways, it, I mean, it is going to really shake out and show who the who the leaders are who are maybe equipped for for the world as it's going to be over the next while and probably for a long time i mean we're probably this isn't what kids sorry let's get sidetracked but there's one thing i was i was thinking of recently is so even since i've been in the states like i've been here like 23 years right and i came in during the dot-com era so i've i've, I've experienced the, the dot-com boom and bust 9 11 the financial crisis mm -hmm. and it appears to me that these things are happening more and more um, frequently right so there's going things are going to happen so the the leaders who have the resilience and the flexibility and the and the ability to meet these things head on uh, are, are really going to come into their own oh for sure and i i think the senior leaders who can take care of themselves and their own resiliency so they can show up and continue to have the endurance to show up and be present i think is critical I think we're all good for you know a week, a two, mm -hmm. week two, a month, but 100 plus days knowing the next 100 days to come will have the same type of needs in terms of leadership flexibility. And for us as leaders to show up in that space where we can be flexible and be able to hear what is happening at the front lines so you can then create that next normal, you need to be in a place of being well rested uh, mm -hmm. having some type of routine that has been absent from our homes in the last hundred months. So finding ways either through gratitude work or a little bit of uh, mindfulness or meditation, whatever you subscribe to, I think is really critical for those leaders to be able to lead in the way that's going to be the most effective in the future.
Yeah, which is an interesting point that you raised. Is like, how do you help these senior leaders who are really suffering their own levels of fatigue? Because let's face it, we've all got uh, COVID and lockdown fatigue at this stage. Uh, how you how do you help and advise the leaders who are really suffering from this themselves and trying desperately to keep everything going while you know suffering from great fatigue themselves? Right. And it depends on the leader. So if they're coming from a space of fear, which unfortunately a lot of CEOs are in that space right now, mm -hmm. fear of their jobs, fear of their organizations, and you know, fear of being uh, socially uh, ostracized, depending on a misstep, if they've said something mm -hmm. wrong uh, or haven't done things according to what uh, perhaps social uh, folks think they should, we'll say. And so they're fearful. And so if they're coming from that place of fear, it's really trying to unpack that and moving away from the fear. No one can lead through a space of fear. Your decisions aren't going to be nearly as effective as when you remove yourself. So if they're operating from that place, I work with them in that space. They are just generally fatigued like we all are. It's trying to kind of mm -hmm. get back to, you know, why are you in this leadership role to begin with? And really focusing on what to be grateful for pretty simple and yet not easy to, to do on a consistent basis. So starting off with gratitude and trying to incorporate gratitude practices within their own team meetings and with their employees. So taking a moment before you start a conversation in a group and uh, pausing, collecting, and then starting off with some positives. What are we grateful for today? Mm -hmm. What's worked well from, you know, from today's perspective? And it's amazing when you start off from a place of gratitude, how everything shifts in terms of what's next in the conversation. Uh, so really working on those simple but basic practices and really focusing on the why you got into your role to begin with, I think helps root those senior leaders that are fatigued in a different place. And for me personally, what's worked well is connecting with my employees. When I see them and I walk in their shoes, so if you're able to do that, if you're in an in-person work environment, I think is really helpful because you see employees showing up in the most interesting circumstances delivering exceptional product or service to your customers. And when you see folks do that, you can't help but be inspired yourself to do the best you can to lead for them and create the best working conditions for them as possible. Yeah, no, those, those are great points. And I think it is and that idea of starting off with, you know, gratitude and positivity, because let's face it, I mean, we're bombarded with so many negatives right now from the um, well, everywhere you look, um, from from the from the virus to the economy to whatever, and you could very easily take all of this on board, and you could fall into the trap of starting your meetings by looking at all the things that are terrible that are happening and be doom and gloom and all of that. You can be positive, uh, you can be positive and optimistic without being naive, right? Correct. Oh, every everyone has something that was positive for them today for sure mm -hmm. and it may take a minute or two to kind of shift your mindset from that approach to think about what's worked well or what's positive and it's always there and it's building in that practice consistently where people begin to shift their mindset from all that isn't working or all that is mm -hmm. wrong uh, either in the organization or in the world at the moment to what is working well today and it could be personal or professional either or works just shifting from that state of oh my goodness another crisis or, you know, another negative news cycle information to, hey, this is what's worked well today. We serve these customers today. Our products were delivered successfully, yeah. today, whatever it is. And it'll be interesting when you start to ask your employees, your team members to do that, the amazing things that they think of that you would never have thought of otherwise to build from, that in itself is inspiring. It is. And sometimes it's just, it's, you know, to celebrate, as you say, to celebrate that you got through another day, another week, things are still moving forward. I mean, there's a lot of great things to celebrate. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much, Shauna. Um, all of Shauna's information will be in her contributor bio attached to this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Sure. Uh, I'm Shona Elliott, and I'm helping right now senior leaders emerging from crisis connect with their employees in an authentic way so they can co-create their next normal for their organizations and achieve their next normal organizational goals. Uh, you can find me at www.shonaelliott.org and happy to hop on the phone with anyone who is feeling a need to build up the resiliency muscle. Yeah, and your book, Create Value as a Senior Leader, that was published in March of this year. Yeah, right? uh, it's on Timing. Amazon, and it'll be released in bookstores in April, and audio, I believe, in January. Excellent. Uh, there you go. Timing, though. I mean, think of it. It was quite prescient, uh, the, uh, the, the book. 
Yes, absolutely. I, when I wrote it uh, last fall, I obviously did not know uh, sure. a pandemic was on its way. And I have 15 years of pandemic experience in the healthcare sector. So I did not think to include that in my book, but uh, certainly yeah. in my revised introduction. I'll yeah. highlight. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right. Well, listen, it was great, uh, great having you with us today. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.